When we start Katia with the XPLM connector, the menu has a drop-down called PLM. It provides us with all the functions we need to interact with the PLM. For example, functions for logging in and out, save functions that allow us to save objects in ARIS, and load functions that upload objects from ARIS. Access Control lets us reserve objects. We can also exchange properties with the PLM. We have functions that generate or update parts lists. And there are also various functions for managing the local workspace. Let's now actually get started in the PDM. First, start a PDM client. In the PDM client, start with the InBasket, which is the list of all open tasks. Here we see an engineering change order, ECO 29 for this change object, and we can see what the user's task is in the work order. In our scenario, they need to make a certain modification to the data attached directly to an ECO. ARIS has a built-in viewer that lets you review the drawing directly on the ECO. This way, you can visualize both 2D and 3D data, and even leave comments or change notes via redlining. The viewer provides certain analytical functions, such as explode, measurements, and cross-sections. We can also load data into CATIA directly from the 3D geometry, as we'll see later. As already mentioned, there are parts attached to the ECO that need to be changed. For example, here we have an article that describes the entire assembly, which of course also has a parts list and attached CAD documents. We will now load a single part into CATIA by visualizing just that one part. If necessary, we can also view any redlining left by other users. We will load this geometry into CATIA using the command XPLM load to CAD. We can then open this element in CATIA by loading it into our local workspace. This makes it available to edit. The change order is for us to apply a little more material here. We change that by increasing this pad's height from 5 mm to 20. Since this part is now under PDM control and is in the process of being changed and has a preliminary status, we can save it again. It's also best to save the change component back into the PDM together with an updated description. This will ensure that our changes are already saved in the PDM. Now we're going to create another component. We have already prepared a geometry, a simple CAD part. This part is not yet under the control of PDM, so we will publish it in PDF first. As you can see, it doesn't yet have a number or a vision. Give it a name and a description, and then with a simple mouse click, both a number and a data card is created in the PDM, and the actual file is uploaded to the CATIA vault. Here you can see that we now have a number, a part number, and a revision. You can, of course, also map further properties with the PDM.
We will now look at the washer that we created in Katia in Aris PLM. Use the display document function in Katia to open the corresponding data card in Aris. Regarding the geometry, we also see that the viewer has already translated the geometry so that you can look at it in the browser. And there is also an article on the geometry with a corresponding part number and some metadata, as well as a link to the corresponding Katia CAD object. We will now load the assembly from the change into our Katia session. To do this, use the xplm load to CAD command again. We then drag the assembly into the Katia session. The loading preview tells us that the modified cardboard is already in our workspace, and therefore doesn't have to be loaded again. We now have the assembly with the modified component in our Katia session, and can now make further changes to the change object within the framework of the engineering change order. So we have now added the washer we just created into the assembly. If we now save the assembly, we can see that the assembly has been modified because we installed the washer. We also see the modified part has been added. At the bottom, we see the washer. Here are the modified item and the modified assembly. The check column in our preview checks the PDM to see if we have access rights for the corresponding objects. In this case, we do. We are also allowed to save the objects we have changed. We see that some other objects have already been released and therefore cannot initially be saved. Our modified object can be saved and will then automatically update both the metadata and the native files when it is stored in the PDM. As we save it, we can also update the parts list so that the article structure always corresponds to the CAD structure. Since we also have to update the drawings, we will now load the corresponding drawing. We can address the drawing directly from the change, look at it again in the viewer if necessary. And then load it into Katia using the usual commands. This load command is available at all relevant points in the PDM. We are now uploading the drawing. We see that the relevant 3D data is already in our workspace. It will therefore not be downloaded again from the PDM. After updating the views, we can see that the geometry is now displayed correctly. We also see the washer that we added to the assembly structure here. Now we turn to the title block. This title block can be customized at any time. Here we have mapped some fields from the PDM as an example and among other things, put the entire revision history there in a table. With the update title block function, this data is now synchronized with the PDM, and we can now see that the latest correct revision to index and the latest change information are shown in the table and are correct on our title block. There is nothing left for us to do but save the drawing in the PDM again. Then we see the complete structure again in our save preview. We can see that the CAD drawing has actually been modified. All other elements have not been modified in my session and therefore don't need to be saved. When saving, we generate a PDF, which is also uploaded to Eris together with a native file. The PDF can be viewed there.
The work in Katia is now done. We will now look at the changes in the PLM. The built-in viewers allow us to validate the data with precision. Here we see the visualized PDF that we just created. Eris asks us to use the comparison function to compare the current drawing with the previous revision status. You can mark the changes in different colors here. Here we can see the geometry changes we made and the washer that was added. We also see some red details on the drawing pad. To take a closer look, we can, of course, zoom in on that point. By updating the comparison geometry again, we can see precisely which modifications have been made to the drawing. It is also possible to show only the old or the new geometry at the point. As already mentioned, the article is also linked to the drawing. If we look at the article, we can see that the article now also has the correct version of the Katia elements, both the 3D and the drawing. And if we look at the parts list for the article, we see that our modified individual part has also received a new revision, and the newly added elements colored in blue, such as our washer, appear here in the parts list. The change is now executed, and users can operate the workflow directly from the change and provide feedback. We can also operate the discussion panel directly from the CATIA. This means that we can provide feedback on the change from inside CATIA and also report that the task is complete, for example. The advantage of ARIS and the XPLM connectors is the close link between metadata and geometry and the seamless support of the workflow directly from the system. We left a message for user Dan Park from inside Katia. He will now be notified that he has a message. He sees in his inbox under My Discussions that Terry Adams has left a message for him. From here, he can jump directly to the modified geometry, which can be visualized as a viewer, and if necessary, then give his feedback. The person responsible for the change can now make an assessment based on the feedback that has been left in the discussion board, and then, in this case, approve the change. This means that all the objects that are attached to the change object are released at the same time. If we now go to the attached objects and look at the drawing, for example, we can see that this CATIA dataset has been released. This means that the objects in CATIA are automatically write protected. 
we can no longer save or change this object because it is in the release state. The change workflow is now complete.